Hello everyone and welcome back to Angie B Crafts. Thank you so much for joining me. So this is an MDF hexagon that I used as a mop up on a previous video um, and you can see we've got some lovely mottling. There was a cross of um, Distress Oxide sprays and some Seth Apter eye zinc sprays as well that made that but I actually really like the colour it's ended up but I thought I'd go into having a look at what you can then do with it just to make something of it using sort of similar products see what we end up with so here we go so I'm going to start off I think with a little bit of crackle a little bit of crackle um, I'm going to use this stencil I love this stencil I don't even know where it's from I have no idea it's one that I've had for many many years as you can see it's filthy as most of my stencils tend to be but that's fine I'm not worried about crisp lines I just want to get texture and color let me see if I can find a cleanish palette knife yep that one will do so this is pretty gets gritty get crackle gel in turquoise now this crackle gel is brilliant it's a one step thing there's a lot of crackle mediums out there and the two step so you have to do one thing then paint something else on top of it and I've never owned any of them because I've always thought I can't be bothered with something that takes two steps but this is a one step um, it is acrylic based it is designed to crackle when you just leave it so if you want it to crackle you need to let it just set if you just want the effect of having a lovely gel then you can do what I'm about to do which is heat set it I do sometimes let them crackle but I tend not to do that on videos because it's not very really exciting to sit and watch and I'm impatient so all I'm going to do, heat gun, I will fast forward this bit so you don't get deafened. Right, so this is what we end up with. You can see it's almost translucent. There is a little hint of the turquoise, but it's almost just like a shiny um, glaze that we've put on. And that's fine. I'm quite happy with that there is there is some hint of turquoise which is what I was after so they are translucent bear that in mind right can I do a project without using it can I I don't think I can no sorry I can't right again pretty gets gritty they make amazing products what can I say I'm a bit obsessed so this is pretty gets gritty gritty granite paste I always struggle to say that I will at some point get a new jar. I keep saying this and never, never getting around to getting it. So I'm down to the dregs of my jar. And I'm just going to pop it on. And I'm not worrying about the fact that I'm going down, going down, going over the top of some of what's already there. Or that I'm covering up the colour in the background. That's fine. And I'm actually not using the method that I normally do, which is to try and stipple it I'm actually wanting it relatively not that word relatively smooth I don't want it totally smooth but compared to the effect of stippling I want it relatively smooth just the mood I'm in right there we go so I'm now going to get, I'm purposely doing this with kitchen towel because it's more controllable, it's a smaller piece than if I was to use my raggy. But I'm actually just going to start going over and bringing back some of what I've covered over. Not all of it, I just want to bring back little hints of it. So before I heat set this, I just want to see if I can get some of that back. So some of it, so you can start to see, I don't know if it'll show on camera, but you can start to see we're starting to get here 
some lumps and bumps coming back but we're still keeping some of the texture paste on that's what I'm after so we want the effect as if it's bad grouting basically A little bit taken off down here. Right, there we go. Pop my lid on this and then I'm going to heat set that now so that we can see what we've got and what we can then add more colour to. We now have this kind of lumpy, bumpy, purple, turquoise, grey thing in front of us. What can we do to it? I don't know. What do we fancy? I'm thinking if we add some more coloured spray onto it. Oh, gloss sprays. So I've just pulled the three. One is called marine which is kind of a tealy colour. I'm not adding a lot because it's only a small area. This one is eggplant. As you can see there that's maybe got a little bit blocked but that's fine. We can cope with little weird directions. We need to get a little pin just in here because we're just going to be getting that okay that's fine and then one last one that I chose was medieval so this is one of the shiny ones um, what's it say doesn't say what it is but basically it's one of the ones if you look on the bottom it's got micro in it We've got a bit of a shine so it's just going to give us a different finish because it's got the mica the ball then was stuck in the bottom this one no this one that I've just used seems to be missing the ball entirely which is fine they're still usable without the ball I've had quite a few that have ended up coming without the ball and then when I finish them finish another one I just remove the ball and pop it in right so we're starting to get a bit of interest there I want a bit more of the purple in the middle I think possibly on that edge a little bit there that purple's weird how it's coming out in lines but hey ho it still works there we go I'm quite liking the look of that now so I'm going to put this to one side give a quick mop up of what is here and then get something that we can then colour up to put on top do we want to go cocks again or do we want to do something else? Uh, right, I'll pull this out. I think we'll use something out of here. So this is kind of full of bits. These are Christmas trees I got from the works. That's a pretty gets gritty. Um, steampunk snowflake. That's a hobby craft um, cast picture frame. No, that's not what I'm looking for. And then underneath all that we've got some balsa and some chipboard bits so I'm thinking chipboard bits what have we got just pull a few out I do like it when you get to just decide as you go along with people watching <laughs> right I've got a few there I don't want to go down the um, cog route today so which bits do we want I, I love a light bulb I do love a light bulb I don't want the train do we want the bodice I think the bodice might look quite nice the bodice and the boot maybe with a light bulb up top I think we've just decided what we're using I'll put this over to one side due to the fact it's going to end up being sprayed and I don't want to spray everything. So, 
For spraying these, I'm going to go with pink. I'm going to use the gloss spray just because I think that'll look really... Oh, we're getting some proper sprays out of this now. The clog must have cleared. And for the boot, we'll go with that colour which is marine and then I think the bulb really needs to have the medieval because it has to have a bit of a sheen to it so I'm just sticking with the same colours I may well add bits into them to make them a bit more interesting and a bit more in keeping with what they are oh you can see how that's starting to shine up I don't know if you can see it let me lift it up and show you you see how it's starting to get shiny around the edges here I quite like that. So these are chipboards, so what's happened is that the, the ink has just gone zoop straight into it. So I'm going to give them a blast and see how they look, but I wouldn't be surprised if I need to add a second layer. Yeah, having a look at those, I think they need a second layer, just because they look a little bit too matte. There's no gloss to them. There's a little bit of a sheen on that one, so that could potentially be okay, but there's no gloss to the others. So I'm just going to reapply the second layer. So the first layer will have absorbed straight in, but it will also have caused a seal over the top. So now we're adding this second layer. It's not going to absorb straight in. It's actually going to sit on top. So they're now more obviously coloured and they've got that lovely glossy sheen that you get from the uh, gloss sprays. Right, just give a quick mop up. Okay, so where do we want them? And do we want to, I don't think I do want to do anything around the edges, I think I like the idea of them standing out. Ooh, I might put some black around the edges of the bulb. I think that would be good. So if in doubt, you go with the stays on ink pad. And this is just because I don't think the bulb would look right with paler bits around it. So I'm just using that. One of the things with these, because they are chipboard, you can't chuck too much liquid at them they tend to start splitting so that's happened a little bit on the bottom of here and the neck of this bulb is feeling a bit delicate so you just need to watch out for that for the chipboard versus the MDF MDF obviously is going to be um, much more resistant to breakages so I'm just going to dry the edges of this and I'm going to dry the neck off a little bit as well because it does feel quite flimsy Okay, that feels a bit more sturdy now, it's a bit drier. Okay, so let's pop these on with a little bit of gel medium. High tech application, if in doubt, use your finger. Right, so I'm going to pop that in the middle. At the top, I've decided that's the way up it's going. Right, so we've got some other colours on my finger coming off, that's fine. We don't worry about other colours coming off. A little bit more. And one last piece. Now I don't think every piece needs a sentiment, so I don't think this one's going to have a sentiment on it. I'm doing fewer and fewer sentiments these days for some reason. I don't know why. I do sometimes put them on, but I'm tending not to put them on as often. There we go. So I will hold that up to the light because it doesn't show very well on the screen there so you can see where we're at we haven't finished but that's where we're at at the moment okay so we've got a light bulb a boot and a bodice okay right so I want to bring in a little bit of sparkle and I'm thinking 
Oh, we got a little box. Um, these two are going to be the best colours, actually. Again, both Pretty Gets Gritty. I love their products. I do use others, as you've seen, but I do love Pretty Gets Gritty products. Um, right. Which one should we go for? Let's put a little bit of the Ruby. The Ruby, I absolutely love this colour. It is stunning. I don't think it shows up terribly well on here. On camera, it tends to look a bit more coppery, but it is actually a lovely red tone. And I'm thinking a little bit of ruby on the light bulb. Oops. Remember, your gel medium stays wet longer than a glue. So it may well do, as just happened there, that it comes off. Oh, yes, I like that. And then I'm going to use the silver. It's not actually silver, it's black pearl. There is a silver one as well in this set. But this one is black pearl, so it's like a charcoal shimmer. I'm just wiping my finger off to get rid of the ruby so I can then use this one. I'd, just, I'd love to know why I use my ring finger for doing this, but for some reason I always have done and I always seem to. So I'm thinking a little bit of a silver heel and then some hints of it coming across on some of the texture. And what about across the top of the bodice? Oh yes, that's a bit nice. Just add a little bit of pretty silvery tones coming across there. Where the boobies would be. There we go. Now I'm thinking actually, I'm not sure that I like the ruby on the light, so I'm going to go back over it and just bring it down a little bit so you can see now I've added the other colour on top, it's just not that ruby back a little bit, so it's not as in your face. Now I do want to get my Pebby or Gilding Wax as well. Because I don't think any light bulb is ever finished unless you've got a little bit of Pebby or Gilding Wax somewhere on it. I want to bring some of that in over here as well. So you can mix, there's absolutely no reason you can't mix your different brands. I mean, I've got, I think I've got three different, oh that's got a bit of, that looks good with that on as well. Um, I've got three different brands of gilding wax and cream and things like that are going like that are going to gilt things up. Three or four different brands actually, um, and I do use them all. I haven't got another one in that colour though. That colour is beautiful. But I think I've got three or four different silvery tones and it depends on the project as to which one I'm going for. And I'm going to use the silvery tone for just going around the edge of the project and finishing it off. Okay. So as ever, I'm not being careful and neat because I don't know how to do such things. I am just slapping it on. But this is just one example of what you can do if you decide that you're wanting to use a mop-up piece. I mean, this could just as easily have been in a journal. And you've used the journal page to mop up and then you make this out of it. That's perfectly reasonable. But I do like using these. I got a load of these hexagons and I love them. I just think they're a different shape so I went out and bought even more after I discovered how much I enjoyed working with them. I've done quite a few hexagon canvases now. They're rather nice. Right, I want that light straighter. You know what, I'm going to put a little bit more gel medium on there. 
don't think I've quite got enough on. It's not wanting to stay still. So if you ever wondered what happens to gel medium if you apply it to paints, it picks up the colour. Right, that already feels more secure. I've not even squished it down. So you need to make sure you've got a decent layer. They've got enough, they're not going anywhere. And there we have, I will lift it up in a moment and show you this rather lovely steampunk-esque hexagon piece. Now what I may well do with my newfound love of resin is see what happens, see if these, I don't know if these will be too thick because they protrude out quite a lot or whether I would be able to get away with using resin on them but I might give it a go on that because that would be quite nice as a coaster. But if not, I can just leave it as a piece of artwork and it can be on display somewhere. Well, I hope you found that interesting and it's given you some ideas of what you can do with some of your mop-up pieces. Um, please keep watching. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Angie, Angie B Cards and Crafts, and on Instagram, Angie Mary B. Subscribe to the channel because there's regular videos going up and please write a comment. Let me know what you think. And hopefully I'll see you again soon. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.